We begin in Ukraine as the Russian invasion nears the two-year mark. The end of 2023 and the beginning of 2024 has seen some major aerial assaults from both sides. After the series of setbacks in the first year, Ukrainian resistance to the invasion picked up pace in the second and proved to be extraordinarily effective in limiting Russian gains. Kiev has received political support, weaponry, and billions of dollars in aid from the West. In the beginning of the year, Ukraine targeted Russian border, border cities, and in response, Moscow ramped up its military production and recruited volunteer fighters. In the latest, according to preliminary analysis of missile fragments in Kiev, Russia has reportedly used Zircon hypersonic missiles against Ukraine for the first time. As the war enters its next phase, Vladimir Putin maintains there will be no peace until Russia achieves its goals in Ukraine. Now, this comes as the Western arsenal is beginning to shrink as Putin's war in Ukraine is severely impacting European stockpiles. Germany's political defense firm, Rheinmetall, is raising the alarm. In fact, its chief says Europe will need 10 years before it is fully ready to defend itself. Rheinmetall CEO Armin Papager says the ammunition stocks are currently empty. The German chancellor said Putin has shown imperial ambitions, and Danish's leader said that an aggressive Russia was proof that Europe has to scale up. Vast amounts of Europe's ammunition is being sent to Ukraine, leaving little efforts for its own stock. And now new production must be added, if only because of the need for Ukraine to be able to defend itself, but also for our own long-term defense interests. A sustained large capacity for the production of ammunition, for example, is important. NATO chief Jan Stoltenberg admits that the Western military alliance is facing a dire problem. He says Ukraine's ammunition expenditure is way higher than the West's rate of production, which puts defense industries under immense strain. According to the U.S. State Department, America alone has sent 1,600 Stinger missiles and 8,500 Javelin anti-tank missiles to Kiev. Experts say this is the equivalent of 13 years of production for the Stingers and five years for Javelins. The French arms industry has an annual production capacity of tens of thousands of 155 millimeter artillery shells, but according to reports, it has already reached its limit. U.S. and NATO powers have urged Western defense companies to ramp up production. In fact, since the start of last year, Ukraine secured pledges from its Western allies for additional heavy battle tanks. And it has also been pleading for fighter jets, however, without any success. This year, the European Union has committed $53 billion in military aid to Ukraine. And the U.K. has also pledged $3 billion while additional aid from the United States has slowed as Congress fights over next steps. Western military aid saw a sharp drop during the second half of 2023, and now there are growing fears that Moscow is gearing up for a fresh offensive in the coming weeks. The two-year mark of the war comes just a month ahead of general elections in Russia, where Vladimir Putin is set for another term as president. The fear is not only will the war in Ukraine escalate, but the mounting threats from Russia, China, and even Iran and North Korea, could, conflicts could break out in other parts of the world as well. From impeachments to inaugurations, if it's a political story, we are on the scene. The race for the White House is heating up. We're beating Biden. How dare he say that? If it's breaking news, we're live with the latest coverage. From the White House, the State Department, and Capitol Hill, we know the issues, but above all, we know the players to bring you the latest in-depth analysis on all the key stories that we're covering. I'm Eric Ham. Join me from Washington here on First Post America.